all right have and have not fans I don't want to say this is going to be a long video because every time I say hey this is going to be a long video it ends up being shorter than expected but this video is going to be about whether or not Oscar was working for the FBI and I'm pretty sure I did a video with the same title a long time ago but in this video just to kind of give you an overview of what we're going to discuss we're going to talk about the let's just call them the uh, the mystery benefactor that was telling Oscar if they if he ensured that Charles did not win the White House it would be a major payday for him and if this is the case then you know if the FBI really is involved what will that mean for the future of Candace and Charles and his bid to go into the White House so I think that, you know, when we first got the news that Oscar was trying to sabotage the campaign to make sure Charles didn't win, the fact that he was willing to try to work with Candace despite, and I don't want to say he screwed over Candace because he was doing his job to get back money. It, it's one thing if Oscar or Brandon, I'm just going to say Oscar, it, it, it would be one thing if Oscar was working for himself stole the money that Candace, you know, extorted and then went about his way. But he was actually, if I'm not mistaken, the title was a asset recovery specialist and pretty much hired by David in order to get the money back to give back to the rightful people that it belonged to being Jim or let's just say the criers. Okay. The criers. So he was pretty much doing the job and that's why Candace was pissed off and it's the whole, this is my money situation and we're not going down that road. But in any case, I feel like when it comes down to it, you know, the fact that he was willing to work with Candace or at least enlist her to assist him, that tells you right then that this was not going to be a small payday. This was going to be like, look, if you're still mad that I was doing my job to get back the money that you stole, then you should work with me because guess what? We're talking a payday that's so big, the money that you quote unquote lost would be pennies in comparison to it and back during that time i think one video i did or at least uh, one discussion was do you think it's the possible that the malones are the ones that hired um oscar because you know they don't seem to like black people too well and there were some race riots and you know race wars if you will within savannah georgia during the last election which we can assume was during the obama years so not having charles in the white house would be a good thing Especially when we learned that the FBI is investigating the Malones to begin with. But based off the finale out of time, it seems to me that um, the Attorney General Kyle, then we have Scott and the FBI as well. It seems to me that since nobody in the White House seems to be fond of Charles whatsoever, that Oscar was working with the man behind the curtain. And we don't know if it is the president directly, but let's just say we're talking people within the government. I guess it's the best way to put it. I'm just going to say government because that could possibly include the president, Kyle, as the attorney general, the FBI, pretty much, you know, these power players are Illuminati who would do anything to make sure that snot nosed punk kid wasn't the one that won the White House, at least not yet. And there are many parallels between Charles and Jim in regards to people from rough upbringings who eventually came up in one way shape or form cleaned up their past in order to make it to they basically they were have not to became haves it's the easiest way to explain it and because of that you know they pretty much you know jim the best way to describe jim is like at the beginning of the series he just turned 50 a midlife crisis with charles it's like you know his friends from the army friends he grew up with even his own mother they don't look at him the same way because of his position of power. And he, I believe, even confided in the Candace. is like, look, I don't even know if I want this, you know. So it's one of those situations where the person that's about to ascend to the next level of political power, you know, Jim from being a judge to governor, uh, Charles with being a senator to the president elect and then eventually the president of the United States. They don't feel it's not that I don't think it's they're not ready for it. It's just that they don't really they don't feel comfortable with all the. The extra baggage that's come that comes with it, for example, you know, um, let's say if there's a person who wants to be rich, but doesn't want to be famous, you know, because there's so much scrutiny that comes with fame. But, you know, having the wealth isn't the bad part about it. The same thing with these politics and whatnot, you know, you get this 
incredible seat of power but you're surrounded by fake people with Charles if he does become, become president it's clear that there's not going to be probably one soul in the White House that cares for him unless it's Candace and that could explain even more so why he's uh, fond of Candace to have somebody by his side and I mentioned this way back when I think in a video like this Charles love Candace or something like that I pretty much explained like it makes sense how he's attracted to Candace because Candace reminds him of the lifestyle that he used to have which unfortunately he's unable to live anymore because you know like I said earlier his mother his friends and whatnot they all look at him differently so Candace would be like a fresh reminder and I don't want to say trophy wife or anything like that but it's almost like um What's a good analogy here? It's almost like, you know, and follow me on this one because I don't know if this is the best analogy, but let's say if you were fat and then you decided to, you know, cleanse your body, water, healthy food, vegetables and whatnot, but you keep like one can of soda and a candy bar in the refrigerator, but you don't eat it, but it's just there to be a reminder of, you know what? I'm surrounded by all this stuff I'm not accustomed to, oatmeal apples water vitamin c but you know i have this sugar retreat here that i can't indulge in like i used to but it's good to know it's there kind of like candace even though i'm pretty sure they'll indulge once they share the same bedroom but that's besides the point so i, I think when it comes down to it you know i really do feel like charles would not enjoy the white house even if he gets it not because he doesn't want it or he feels like he's not ready but because the people in there don't want him there to begin with. So what does this mean for Oscar? Well, the thing about it is Tyler Perry has a way of elevating these secondary characters to unbelievable positions of power. For example, Maggie Day was well known to be a hell of a campaign manager. I think David even didn't name drop her, but mentioned a very successful campaign. I know, I know the perfect campaign manager in reference to the governor, lieutenant governor position that he and Jim were going for. And it wasn't until season two when Maggie Day was introduced. And if I'm not mistaken, and I could be wrong, but I think Maggie Day wasn't introduced until episode two of season two. That is ironic, right? So when it comes to that, you know, Maggie Day, after she died, I believe they said they had a memorial in D.C. because, you know, she had helped so many politicians make it to various levels of success. And Landon was pretty much her apprentice. So after Maggie Day kicked the bucket, unfortunately, because I love Maggie, Landon was like the next in line. And next thing you know, he's working for the potential president of the United States. So that's quite the promotion. So Oscar working for David in order to help out Jim is potentially enlisted by the FBI to sabotage Charles who's running for president. So yeah, I remember and I still stand by this, you know, complaining like, okay, we have Candace dealing with these judges slash governor level politicians. Now all of a sudden she's, prancing around with the next potential president of the United States, Tyler Perry definitely jumped a shark. But the same can be said with Landon and Oscar for dealing with these high-level politicians to begin with. So uh, Candace should get off the hook for right now. But I do think it actually does make a lot of sense that Oscar would be working for the FBI or at least these government officials in order to sabotage Charles because, remember, he was working for people who didn't want Charles to win because pretty much he enlisted Candace as like, look, um, I need you to do exactly what I say. We need to get some kind of dirt on him because it seems to me that Oscar was enlisted to do what the FBI couldn't, which was to find any kind of dirt or anything that could be used to sabotage Charles' campaign because Scott even mentioned, man, there's nothing on this dude. He's clean. He's clean. So to have Oscar trying to dig up the dirt, and, and that's the thing, and I can't believe that Oscar really was working for the FBI because kind of like, you know, despite the power that people like Veronica and Jim have, they have underlings because there are some spots that they can't get into, not because they're not powerful enough to go. It's just that due to their status in the public eye, for example, all the times Mama Rose said, Jim, come down to the restaurant, come to the restaurant. When are you coming? I'm running for governor, Rose. You know, I can't be seen down there again. It's not that he's not powerful enough to go. It's just that for his public persona and whatnot, he can't be seen in a place like that. Kind of like, you know, uh, Bruce Wayne, you know, a public figure, but he can't be seen everywhere that Batman is, even though technically he is Batman. It's like you really can't see Bruce Wayne fighting off the Joker and the Penguin, but you can see Batman doing that. Do you see what I mean there? 
And it doesn't help that I was watching some Batman the Animated Series a few minutes ago. That's probably why it's on my mind. So I feel like when it comes down to it, Oscar was pretty much enlisted because he's able to venture down nooks and crannies that the FBI or these high-level officials who don't like Charles aren't necessarily able to go. And then from there, he's like, look, you know what? This dude is obviously straight. I can't flirt with him or pretend to be gay like I've done with other men in the past in order to get what I need from them. But Candace, look, you're so good at what you do. Let me get your help. Pretty much from there, play Michelle Obama. Make him lose the election, but then when he comes back around for one, maybe two terms, play the long haul. Make so much money from appearances. You write a book. You'll be straight for life, but she wanted that fast money. And it's kind of ironic. It, it almost reminds me of, hey, we don't want the black guy to win, but when he comes back, let him win. Maybe go for two terms. Kind of like, you know, the governor of, of Georgia saying that it without saying it directly that they weren't the state of Georgia wasn't ready for a black governor. So have Jim run and win for one, two terms. Then you come back, run for yourself, David, and possibly you can win from there. So and ironically enough, as time went on, we found out that Maggie wanted to put David in the position of governor and several other positions. David was certainly lucky. And then he's like, well, I'm going to run on a separate ballot. So I wonder if the same thing's going to happen with this because we still don't know a lot of things. Who was Charles running mate? It was hinted or suggested by Catherine that the person running against Charles was a female. So it's kind of ironic that whoever wasn't keen or wanted Charles to lose was actually inclined to have a woman win, which could be interesting. It's like, well, maybe because whoever the opponent was, was somebody who felt like their policies and their ideas for the government and whatnot, they were probably more in line with what the current administration was going for. So that's probably why Charles wasn't their first pick to win, is the best way to put it. So now let's just talk about more about what Oscar had planned for Candace. But you know what? I think I did really break down the plan. It was just to find incriminating evidence or dirt on Charles, give it back to him. Then Oscar would relay the information to his officials, and then that would be it. Have him lose, and it's a major payday. But Candace decided to go rogue, do it herself, but then her plans were easily foiled because she was playing a game at a level that she's used to, but she's dealing with people... At a much higher level than she is. So pretty much because she didn't listen to Oscar. She pretty much screwed herself over. And then later on. Oscar was more inclined to work with Candace. Because Candace said she agreed to work with him. Even though it made no sense. Of it. See the thing about Oscar. Who was one of my favorite characters by the way. After he got the money back from Candace to give to David. For whatever reason he was on the plane going to New York. He went back to Atlanta. And even though his job was done, he almost got killed by Candace and then stuck around in Savannah. And then in this situation, hey, work with me to make sure Charles loses. No, I'm not going to do it. OK, fine. You're useless. You're, you're useless to me now. I think that's when he actually came into the room with a bag of money and then it turned out to be fake. Or I think maybe like the top bills might have been real, but then everything else was fake. And then after discovering that, you know, Candace's cover was blown. Oh, you're useless to me. But then later on, they talk a couple more times, even though, you know, Candace is like, if you don't go away, I want to scream. And then eventually that's when she's like, hey, I'll work with you, which turned out to be a trick in order to get him drugged in order to steal the inheritance money. So unfortunately, as much as I love Oscar, kind of like what I mentioned in my other videos about if loving you is wrong, it isn't the actors or the characters. It is the writing. And this is the haves and have nots in a nutshell. Whenever you have a very intelligent character making dumb ass decisions that are completely out of left field, they're most likely going to be killed off soon. And I think a lot of people are saying that about Veronica based off her falling for David's trick. But then again, in a recent episode of her being paranoid. Yeah, I don't know if that's the case. But when it comes to Oscar, it's very hard to know what Tyler Perry was thinking with the character. I like the character, but in terms of the consistency of what his purpose was, I do not know. But I do miss Philip Boyd on the show. So I think we pretty much discussed everything there is in regards to 
what if Oscar was working for the FBI in terms of, okay, we know what Oscar's mission was to make sure that Charles lost. If that happened, major payday. But then we get to the point where Oscar is dead. So now what? I think that Scott is the one who's actually and Scott was the, uh, he's the actor, Nathan, I believe his name, Nathan Boyd. I forgot. Sorry. I forgot. Uh, Nick, Nick Ballard, Nick Ballard. Uh, he was on too close to home as Dax, but in any case, we know that he's going to be assigned to Savannah in order to, I guess you could say, do what Oscar was unable to do by finding dirt on Charles, but in this, oh, sorry, readjusting myself in the chair. Um, and also if you want to donate to the channel, I'm trying to raise 300 bucks because I had a few people who, uh, know me well and what I do. And it's like, yo, um, you ought to invest in one of those razor chairs because those are used by a lot of people who stream, you know, video games and whatnot on Twitch. And since you record and live stream a lot, you want to invest in one. So link to my PayPal is in the description below. If you want to donate a couple bucks, that'd be cool. Maybe I'll have a less squeaky chair, but in any case, back to the video, I, I do feel like when it comes down to Scott, he's going to be digging up dirt on Candace and the thing about it is Landon's team did a terrific job cleaning up the mess, but Kyle knowing firsthand who Candace or, or let's just say what Candace really is. He's willing to dig up the dirt, but the question is, what will they do with that? That's the only big question here. And I think I mentioned this in another video. If you ask me, I think that it's going to be used for a couple of reasons. Number one, to give Charles the boot to make sure he doesn't win. I mean, yeah, he doesn't. Well, he did win the election, but he doesn't go into the White House. Number two, they could use it against him as I like, look, if you don't play ball the way we want you to, Chucky, then guess what? We're going to expose your um, girlfriend here to make you look bad because you brought trash into the White House. Not that he would be the first president to do so. Um, number three, simply Kyle getting revenge. Yeah, I think that's about it. And I think the main fallout from this, it would be, it could end up where because there's so much dirt that's been unearthed by um, Scott, because remember he said he wanted to Kyle's position as attorney general, and this could be a way his, his way of doing so. Scott is essentially the new Gia. And I wanted to talk about that, you know, if Gia was actually working for the FBI as well. But that's not the case because just like Oscar, Gia's role was a bit unclear. Okay, working in the prostitution ring, infiltrating that. Oh, she's an informant who was actually planted in the hotel by George because Sarah told Jim that. And her mission was to not only investigate the prostitution ring, but bring down Jim Cryer as a result by pinning him on it, but also finding out information about the Quincy Maxwell murder in order to pin that on Candace Young. And then all of a sudden, Gia's gone. Um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So Scott is essentially the new Gia. I don't know how exactly he's going to blend in, especially because, um, you know, Charles has his secret service and I'm pretty sure they would know who he is. So I do not know what's going on with that, but we shall see as time goes on. But there are a couple big things that Scott might unearth by going over to the Artesian Hotel. Uh, number one, I think the biggest one is finding out how Oscar actually died and that Candace Young was the one that did it. <sighs> I think that's going to happen. I, oh, excuse me. I think that's going to happen, guys. And from there, the next thing is, you know, I really do feel, I think I mentioned this, uh, what video did I talk about it in? I think it was the one I said, um, um, Jeffrey Owens with a lion tattoo, a recent video I did that's about an hour long. And I, I pretty much talk a lot about Scott and what's going to happen at the Artesian Hotel. So if you have not checked out that video, I highly suggest it. I think Scott might, you know, I think there might be a revive, uh, revive, rev, revive, rev, the prostitution ring will be reconstructed because I think Catherine might actually go to jail. And if she goes to jail, Roderick is screwed, Rocky is screwed, and I don't mean by Catherine. And the only choice they have is, okay, Candace has gone legit, so we need to bring back the prostitution ring. And then Scott might get mixed up in that and try to figure out what's going on to see if Candace Young is involved. And from there, use that dirt against her. And, you know, I do feel like Scott will be successful in some capacity. But the main question after getting that dirt, what's going to happen? 
do you think this dirt could be used to break up Charles and Candace? Because I do think you'll have them at each other's throats where Charles might find out that all this dirt has been dug up by, you know, these people who don't like him and they're threatening to use it. Not just to expose Candace, but to ruin Charles's reputation. So the only way in order to avoid that scenario is to let Candace go. But Candace did say, if you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. Another scenario is Landon might be the one who gets blamed for this. It's like, you're attracted to me. And in order to sabotage me and Candace, in order to get closer to me, you undid the work that I told you to do by, you know, hiding Candace's tracks. Had that exposed in order to get close to me. And then there might be a falling out between Charles and Landon. I There are so many ways this can go down. And I am here for it. I really want to see what's going to go down. But I I think it is almost safe to say that Oscar was working for the FBI. Uh, possibly the president. I think the president was like, look, I can't have anything involved with this. But Kyle, you got my full support. Go ahead and do what you got to do. You know, find the lowest of the low to accomplish this. But make sure it happens. Make sure this guy doesn't win. And then that leads to, I really want to see what's going I mean, when the president calls Candace a hot piece of black ass, I got to see what's going on there. So I do feel like maybe Kyle, that's like a trigger statement because he knows Candace's personality and he's dealt with people like this before. So saying something like that might make Candace turn into Cardi B in the White House. And that is not going to be a pretty sight. So with that being said, folks, I really enjoyed making this video. I really did. I had to talk to my mom about this a few weeks ago. Well, actually, not a few weeks ago, but basically after the finale. And I think it is a very viable theory. And maybe this will actually give us the justice for Oscar we've been wanting for so long, at least for me. Because even David was quick to call Jim. Is like, I mean, call out Jim. is like, man, he, I don't think he commits suicide like that. I didn't figure he was the type. So I think the mystery will be solved. But there's so many questions like, RK was the one that wrote the note. And even though Candace told him to be careful, I'm pretty sure he left fingerprints on the note and the door because couldn't they just dust the door and everything to see whose DNA was in the room? Possibly. And then from there, you know, what's going to happen? Not only the Quincy Maxwell charges, but then you have the Oscar charges. And even though we probably will never figure this out, do you think with um, Scott being in Savannah, will he find out what happened to Malik? I, Candace, I swear, all these... Look, I'm, and I've said it in plenty of videos before, I'm glad you're trying to go on a straight and narrow, but that doesn't necessarily mean all of your bad doings are automatically forgiven by your enemies. You're screwed. So with that being said, do you think Oscar was working for, let's just say the FBI, the government, the president, whatever the case may be? What will be the aftermath of the truth of his death being revealed? Candace's true colors how would that be used against Charles will that lead to a falling out between Candace and Charles or Landon and Charles and Candace I'm actually really excited about this I cannot wait to see what happens believe I know this sounds weird but believe it or not I think I'm more intrigued to see what's going to happen with this storyline than even the Derek Lyon tattoo thing and I know that's a bold statement for me to make despite how many times and how many videos I've talked about the lion tattoo. So as always, guys, uh, once again, if you would like to donate to my get a chair fund, be sure to hit me up on PayPal. Once again, there's a link in the description below. Um, all my social media, you know, the drill, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook page, Facebook group, help get this video out. Be sure to share it in any have and have not Facebook groups that you're in. You know, obviously the haves and have nots review, that's my group, but it, I know there are a bunch of other groups out there. Uh, if you have Twitter, tweet it out. Tweet Tyler Perry, hashtag H-A-H-N. The show is on hiatus, but the channel is still going strong. So thanks so much for tuning in and I'll talk to you soon. Congratulations on making it to the end of this video. If you like what you just saw, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Or if you have anything you would like to add to the video, make sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to keep up with me on social media, go to the description box. All of my links for social media are right there. Also, if you feel like you would like to donate to the channel, make sure to click on the link to PayPal. Any amount helps a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars. As a full time YouTuber, any support from my fans really does mean a lot to me. Finally, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon. That way you're kept up to date on any new content I post to the channel. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll talk to you in the next video.